Good evening, Cyber Friends and Mitty Man. Coming back at you from Walker's Music. Word for the day. We're a little late with it today, but you know, like I always said, I told everybody that I do videos and when I feel the unction of the Spirit to do one. And uh, we thank God that we are able to do them. And we also want to take the time out right now to give God all the praise and glory for life, health, and strength for as well as it is. And we give Him glory and give Him honor. We also thank God for all the cyber friends. You know who you are from the one that, uh, from the Bible study, uh, Brother JT, uh, we had a pretty good uh, Bible study on Tuesday night, last night. Uh, we, uh, we had uh, also our, one of our other dear, dear friends and supporters, Sister Lady D, uh, was absent on that particular night. I believe it might be a little bit up under the weather, but we saying that they keep on keeping on that it, we're gonna come out. We're gonna. This too will pass, as the song said. This too will pass. What I wanted to say tonight, people, I wanted uh, is is something that's been dealing with me to kind of heavily, and uh, I've been thinking about it just about all day long today. We, as people of God, now, I'm saying this here in in humbleness. I'm making certain that I. I'm letting you know that I say this with all the ominous in mind, not to be puffed up, but I'm saying it so that we could get about doing our Heavenly Father's business. I've been saying this here for a long time, and I'm, I'm still yet hot on that subject. As my, It said we are workers of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And I want to say that... Uh, and me and Brother JT was speaking on last evening in the Bible study. You're going to be criticized. You're going to be misunderstood. People, we're in good company because Jesus was criticized. And he was misunderstood. Now, the one thing that I want to make clear, if I can, surely, if they criticized Jesus mocked him some stopped following him surely if they did that to him they're going to do it to you remember Jesus said the servant is not greater than his master now Jesus is our master and if they've done it to him they're going to do it to us now I'm reminded I want, I want us to I'm trying to build us up we need to encourage ourselves we need to be like David I know they were throwing rocks at David Castle. David said if he had wings as a dove, he'd take away and fly away and be at rest. When his own son, Absalom, led an insurrection against his kingdom and everything, and he was very, very burdened over that thing. Uh, David loved his son Absalom, and almost to the point to where one of jo uh, David's captains, Joab, and told him, David, I believe if... If, if if all of us would have died and, and, and saved your son, you would have been you would have it, that would have made you more happy. And we know how the story goes. But what I'm saying is as a child of God, when you walk and you try to walk in the pathway of righteousness, there are always gonna be some people that are gonna try to find some fault in you. And so therefore you have to always walk upright did I say you always do what's right no I didn't I said you walk upright meaning we are not trying to pe people please and let me make that perfectly clear many man tries I don't try to please people no no and neither should you but you should do what's right because it's just right to do what's right not because no one's looking at you but nevertheless you are being watched upon the microscope because, see, the first thing scoffers want to do is say, uh-huh, see, as soon as they catch you slipping a little bit, first thing they're going to say, they're going to discredit the whole thing. This is how come I said we must walk upright according to the calling and the word of God, making certain that we do what the Lord say do because these scoffers and these here, these here soup sales and, and all these here duck snuff dippers that want to get, get going around there talking trash, they trying to find out something against you. So they can discredit the whole thing. So now we need to be kingdom builders. So therefore we want to walk worthy of the calling. 
I'm going back also, I made reference to, da to David. I want to make reference to Daniel. Let us be a Daniel. In other words, Franklin Graham got something they call Dare to Be a Daniel. That's a, that's a, I, I've been to that website, and I, it's a very good site, and I love the stuff that they are doing on there. Matter of fact, I even kind of, my, I kind of got myself registered with that site because I want to learn some more stuff about what they are up to and what they are trying to do in these last days of kingdom building. But dare to be a Daniel. Why do we dare to be a Daniel? Let us let, let us let us let us let us see. Let us see what can we can we, can we even consider ourselves in the same class with Daniel. Daniel prayed three times a day, even in the midst of when he was ordered to not do so. Daniel did not hide. He did not try to apologize for praying. Daniel prayed anyhow. Well, King Darius or Darius, however you however you want to call it, they made a decree. They, the, the enemies of, of, Dan, of Daniel, enemies, I say, you see, when you, when you live upright and you're trying to do the best you can to follow our Lord and Savior, you're always going to have people, some of them not enemies, some people that's called to be friends, going to always be looking to try to cut you down. They're looking for you to make one mistake, say one bad word, say one thing out of the way, even though most of the time they have provoked you to it. You have to be careful, though. But they're going to try to dismiss the whole thing. The enemies of Daniel did the same thing with him because the king loved Daniel. The king knew Daniel. He knew Daniel well enough to know Daniel had great integrity. And he did something without thinking. Now, how come we must, we must always think before we move people? Always consider. Always consult God before you make any major decision. Matter of fact, it wouldn't be no, it wouldn't not only the major decision, the minor decision too. Don't do anything until you consult with God. Just like it says in the song. You know, you commit your way to the Lord and he will what? There you go. Commit. Commit. In other words, get counsel from God first. Well, Daniel prayed anyhow. And the king had to put Daniel in the lion's den. But nevertheless, we know the story. Daniel used the lion for a mattress and a pillow. Daniel slept all night in the lion's den. And then when the king got up that next morning, he went inquiring of Daniel. And he told the old king, live forever. The God I'm served. God I serve. The God that you and I serve. He is able people. So now, what, why did I, why did the man say that? God is still in the miracle business. God is still in the deliverance business. Jesus told us, in his last commission, his final word to his disciples, he told them to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's what Jesus told us. That, that, that's, that's for you and I as well. So now we are supposed to go and teach all nations. Now, I know somebody saying, well, how, I, I mean, I just barely can get across town. How can I do this and go to all nations? No, yes, you can. You can support the ones that are going to these nations. And then you can get out of your comfort zone. You, you won't even witness this to people that you see in the grocery store. Amen. We won't tell anybody. In other words, if you were accused of being a Christian, would they find you guilty? Well, not from where I stand, because some of we we don't even mention the name of the Lord when we get with certain people. Now, when we get with our church group, we'll talk about the Lord and the Amen and all that with our church. But when we get with our people that don't think the way we think, we start talking the mess they talk. They can't tell us from them. So this is a direct. This is direct against what we are supposed to be about. In other words. If you got it, you ought to show some sign. So when people that is without, when they look at you, they can tell you something different about you. By the way you move, by the way you talk, by the way you act, your actions. Jesus said you shall know the tree by the fruit. So people, I'm going to make this video very short. I'm going to cut it off right here. Are we working for the kingdom? Now remember there's two kingdoms. You got the kingdom of darkness and you got the kingdom of God. Which one, we, which one are you working for? Which one, I ask myself, me man, which kingdom are you working for? Now, let me, let me help you out a little bit with that. If you see yourself leaning more toward the works of darkness and the works of the flesh, guess what? 
you working for the kingdom of God. And if you find yourself leaning more toward the, the, the fruits of the Spirit, then you're working for the kingdom of God. People, it's not no two ways to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. So guess what? That means we got to do it his way. I've often told people in the church, I tell them all the time whenever I get a chance, a kingdom has a king. It's no democratic society. This is a kingdom. And it has a king. And guess who's the king? Jesus is the king. And guess what? Whatever the king says, that's what goes. So you ain't, you can't argue with the king. See, in other words, he told me to go, ye therefore. So guess what? Mitty man must go. In other words, when I, when I meet him at the Piglet Wilson or wherever I meet him at the Walmart, wherever I go, I represent the kingdom. This is what we are supposed to be doing. Now guess what? Do you have to do it? No, you don't. God gave you free will. But there's one going to come a reckoning day soon and very soon. After a while, we're going to all stand before our maker. And we're going to give it an account. Whether good or bad, whatever we've done, we're going to give it an account. Now, people, I don't want to get there. And I got more on my book than God got on his. Amen. I mean, Jesus said two commandments. I give you a new commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and all thy strength, and with all thy might. I'm paraphrasing. And the second one is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments rest the law and the prophets. That Those are the commandments, people. These are for the old people that are going about talking about the grace thing that me and JT touched on that last night as well. This is the kingdom of God. This is the will of God for our lives. Everybody that claims to be born again should be soul winning. You should be telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Teaching them and showing them whatever God has showed you. We are supposed to be showing them. This is the will of God for our lives. And this is kingdom building. Now what are we going to do with it? Are uh, we going to sit here and just keep on talking about what we can't do and what well, the Lord didn't send me? No, everybody's not called to be a musician. Everybody's not called to be a preacher or whatever. But everybody is called to be a kingdom builder. You you're supposed to be saving, winning souls. You didn't get saved just for you to sit in your church. Jesus saved you to go save others. Yes, teaching them about the kingdom. Whatsoever he had commanded us. In the Great Commission, go ye therefore into all the world and, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No, you ain't got to go to no Colgate University. You ain't got to go get no license to do what Jesus told us to do. I get sick of people talking about license. You don't need a light. God gave you your license when Jesus told you to go. When he said go, that was your license. You ain't need no light to baptize nobody. Don't let no preacher, nobody tell you that. That man made junk. Jesus said every believer every believer if you believe then you ought to be able to lead somebody to Christ and you ought to baptize Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch he wasn't no preacher he was a deacon you better hear what I'm saying people we need to study we need to study you know what Jesus, God said my people are destroyed for a lack of what money no for a lack of knowledge we don't we, 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 we perish because we don't we don't study we can't tell what the, in the Bible because we don't know what's in the Bible. Because we won't study it long enough to find out what's in it. You can't claim the promises of God if you don't know what they are. People, we need to get our, get, our, get our act together. And I didn't mean for this video to go that long, but I'm just saying this. And people, we're in the last days and we should be kingdom building. Telling everybody about Christ. And not only telling them, we, our life must, we must live the life we confess. Do that mean perfection? No, we're working toward that. And guess what? We are never going to be perfected until Jesus comes. So all the while, it's just like what old Dr. E.B. Hill said a long time ago. I remember him when he got his handkerchief. And he put us up under this handkerchief, the blood. And that the Holy Spirit is up under that working. Until he's perfecting things. Every time he finds something, he pulls it out and throws it away. That's the way he's working on you and I right now. But we are covered under the blood. See, don't look at me, the man. See, see, look at, see, when God look at this, he's looking at the blood of his son and the Holy Spirit upon it that working and he pulls it out. 
That's the way he do it. The Holy Spirit up under there working. He finds some old mess Ernest doing. He pull it out. Me the man, you shouldn't do that. That's the way the Holy Spirit works with us. And as long as we have a repentant heart, me and Brother JT talked about David too last night. David, David did some things. Yes, David did some things. But David was quick to repent. And I feel like we, as a, as a body of Christ, when we do wrong, just be quick to repent. And God will do us the same way he did David. He forgave him and he went on. Yes, David had to go through some consequences. Remember now, God does not justify sin. And he cannot, he cannot overlook it. He cannot look away. A man will reap what he sow. So now don't think that you can do mid man any kind of way and then you're not going to reap what you sow. Oh yeah, but now God forgives you. But you're going to reap what you sow. Remember that. So with that being said, this mid man saying whatever you get, whatever you get into, if God is not in it, Honey, it's best you come on out of it, sugar, because it's going to come to nothing. This is Middle Man saying, until the next time on tomorrow night, we're going to be, we are attending on having a great Bible study on tomorrow night, if the Lord say so. Meet us there at Blog Talk Radio at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, this is Middle Man saying peace and goodbye. <laughs>